The film industry is one that is known for its various genres, and having very specific periods of said genre. Take the Western, for example, incredibly popular in the late 40s and 50s, but completely dead today. The musical, incredibly popular in the 1950s and 60s, but sparsely available in today's film market. To what do we owe these various periods in film history? Many say that it is supply versus demand, and that when there are too many films of the same genre being made, things become stale. This raises the question, how long can a film franchise survive without crumbling under its own weight? Is a cinematic universe the answer? Can a series of films that all intertwine with one another truly survive if they'll all one day become stale and irrelevant? So many franchises have adopted a cinematic universe in one way or another. We've got Harry Potter, Star Wars, Alien, Sony, whatever the hell they're doing with the Spider-Man universe, DC, and Marvel. Let's have a look at what I believe to be the two most contrasting of the bunch, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the DC Extended Universe. Marvel kicked off its cinematic universe in 2008 with the release of Jon Favreau's Iron Man and has been going strong for nearly 10 years, releasing three films a year since 2016 and growing their roster to 19 films in total, ranging from intense spy thriller action flicks to epic space operas to incredible team-up films and hopeful origin introduction pictures. Although I'll be the first to admit that Marvel has a villain problem and that the majority of their films tend to follow a certain formula, it is impossible to argue that Marvel isn't doing an incredible job making tremendously successful films and that their brand has become one of the most recognizable in late years. Marvel has carefully crafted their characters to have deep, interesting backstories and has succeeded in making B-list heroes into relatable protagonists. It is this careful sculpting of their characters, along with near picture-perfect castings for every role, that has made the MCU the hit that it is today. In Stark, <laughs> see what I did there? Contrast to Marvel's soaring success with their cinematic universe, we have DC's pathetic attempt at building a universe as successful as Marvel's in just four films, the DC Extended Universe. Now let me get this straight. I absolutely love DC. I just can't seem to be able to tolerate any of the decisions that they have made in recent years in hopes of copying Marvel's recent influx of cash and popularity. Man of Steel tried to ride on Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy's coattails and flopped critically as the dark tone set by Zack Snyder didn't seem to fit the Superman character. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice was far too bloated and confusing, with a mediocre first half and a completely unwatchable third act, and tried much too hard to cram in as many comic book storylines into two and a half hours as it could. It took Marvel eight years to finally do Civil War, yet DC decided to make their two frontliners do battle in their second movie. Something about that seems wrong to me. Suicide Squad was overly campy and didn't exactly enthrall as many viewers as DC might have hoped, and is considered by most to be the worst superhero film in recent years. <clears throat> Except for you, Spider-Man 3. DC looked to be on very thin ice at the end of 2016, while Marvel had just had their best year in history, becoming the second richest company on the planet. The release of Patty Jenkins' Wonder Woman in 2017 was enough to give some fans hope for the future of DC films, but I believe if their next film, Justice League, is as much of a flop as Batman v Superman was, DC's extended universe will be doomed. How can DC improve to be able to catch up to Marvel? It's simple, really. Marvel spent a long time sculpting their characters, shaping them into interesting, dynamic characters that change in accordance to issues and that evolve throughout the series. Take a look at the two front liners of the respective universes, Iron Man and Superman. In Jon Favreau's Iron Man, Tony Stark starts the film as a greedy billionaire that cares for nothing besides himself and his money. But following a horrific accident involving his own weapons, Tony ditches the weapons developer persona and decides to turn his life around, becoming the heroic Iron Man. Yes, he still kills people, but his intentions shifted from the beginning of the film, 
as he was presented with a problem, he changed, and overcame it. Superman, on the other hand, as portrayed in Zack Snyder's Man of Steel, starts the film as a heroic, powerful character, and finishes the film in the exact same way. Superman does not evolve as a character in the film, and hence remains static and boring. This isn't to say that characters in other films don't change or evolve, but it is essential, especially for comic book characters, to help us relate to them and to humanize them. DC's character problem is only one of many. Another, for example, is DC taking themselves way too seriously, again riding on the Dark Knight's coattails. The dark tones of the first two films and the dark color grading causes the films to feel fake. DC then tried to compensate with Suicide Squad, with bright colors and overly campy characters, although the majority of the third act of the film is dark, washed out, and looks dirty. It's like DC couldn't decide on a tone, so they just threw everything they thought of into a blender and poured what turned out into theaters. Things don't look all bad for the future, though. DC has movies slated all the way to 2021, and they are showing no signs of stopping, although they are being met with massive amounts of critical backlash. Hopefully, with so many films in their lineup, we'll get at least one outstanding one. Looking forward, I hope that future films such as Aquaman and The Flash turn out as great as Marvel projects like Spider-Man Homecoming and Thor Ragnarok. Both production studios have things going for them. I guess only time will tell as to which one wins the cinematic universe race. Thank you all for watching this first video essay. Uh, it is very short. I did not have a lot of time to record or to edit this video. I wanted to get it up as quickly as I could for you guys to watch and to enjoy for the weekend. So uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. And if you guys enjoy this style of video, please let me know and I will do my best to recreate stuff like this in the future. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.